Ukrainian spring counteroffensive will happen very soon and there will be night offensives. There was a time when thermal and night capability was the superpower of special forces. These times are over. With your help, we intend to deliver thermal and night capabilities to Ukrainian frontline units down to squad level. I'll walk you through it. We have here an expert on night vision and thermal device. Can you please explain or open up to me the tactical side of these devices? Yeah, so first of all, uh, when we are talking about uh, night vision and uh, thermal devices, it's uh, a definite uh, bump in the capability of those units. So if we are talking about uh, warfare in the bigger spectrum, then uh, have you heard about this uh, healthy living pyramid that uh, on the lower base there's like everyday moving and eating healthy and then spirituality and stuff like that? Have you heard mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. So if we take the same thing to the military world, then uh, the building block is basically will to fight. That is the most important uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing above that is skills to fight. And the tip is uh, gear. And uh, if you have a unit that has the will to fight and uh, has the skills to fight, but they lack gear, then they can still do lots of things. Uh, the more gear they get, uh, the more their uh, force amplifies. And uh, night vision and thermals are like a huge bump in the gear part. So basically you can have a unit uh, that has uh, a big will to fight and has proper training but sometimes they lack the modern gear that their enemy maybe has. And the thing is that you can have a unit that has worse training and worse motivation and will to fight, but they have the bigger leap in technology mm -hmm. and they might, because of that, they might uh, win a fight uh, with the enemy who is better motivated, better trained, but they don't just have this technology. So that's how big of a difference it really makes. I went to visit the Ukrainian snipers training for the spring counteroffensive in Estonia right now and they let me shoot all of their weapons and I loved it. Especially I loved the 50 BMG that had a kick to it. But I asked the sniper Mikola about the thermal and night capabilities and this is what he had to say about it. Mikola, what kind of a weapon do we have here? So this is PGM Precision Hikata 2 50 BMG Cal big sniper gun and yes. it's really for long range and actually more to be more precise it's like anti-material rifle for stopping vehicles anti-material it means you can put inside ammunition that goes through the armor of the vehicle uh, yes uh, there is armor piercing rounds and explosive rounds for such missions and how far do you expect to shoot with this weapon effectively? Effectively from one and a half to up to two, possibly more than two kilometers. Two kilometers. And in two kilometers you're not expecting to hit a moving target, right? Only still targets. Still uh, targets. You can actually, you can engage moving targets if it's moving vehicle. Yes, you can stop it with this gun. Have you, how, what is the like the furthest distance you have hit a target with this weapon? During this training, yeah, uh, one kilometer. One kilometer. That at, is... at this moment, and we are going every day a bit further. So, so being a sniper, right? A, a lot of the missions might happen during the night time. Um, yes, because enemy is sneaky and try to get close to our positions at night usually. So. In the night time, you must have thermal vision or night vision. Uh, what about thermal vision, for example? Have you trained with thermal vision here? 
we are starting this training but unfortunately we don't have these thermal vision sites or attachments in ukrainian army now okay and this is actually where you my viewers can help we're going to do a campaign later and you can help to get these thermal visions thermal vision is very important in the night without it you cannot really engage the enemy if you don't see them right um, yes, and you can't see them because it's daylight scope only and when it mm -hmm. becomes dark you can't see through it anything. Well, Mikola, I want to thank you for what you are doing. You're uh, saving Ukraine, but you are also actually, in my eyes, saving Estonia because every man you take down from the Russian side is one less man attacking Estonia. So thank you very much for what I would like doing. to thank you also for your great help and the help of other countries who really did uh, Big job for us. Slow Ukraine. Hero and Slow. Let me see the job. So today we were shooting with uh, HK416. It's specially built for night vision operating. Uh, all the modern uh, accessories on this rifle are special made for night vision use. IR light, IR laser. Uh, IR capable uh, reflex sight, so our enemy is able to see uh, IR laser as well because they also have uh, night vision. So I would use uh, passive aiming with this reflex sight, and of course silencer to uh, make the heat signature a little bit smaller and less sound. So without the night vision, I would not go to the patrol on any circumstances. I think I would pick. Uh, night vision over the rifle at night time because then I'm able to see the enemy. We just shot a weapon through a thermal sight. What do you say, would Ukraine need such a capability? Yeah, we need to understand that Ukraine basically need to fight 24-7. Like, you know, and every time you need to go to the night missions and the better equipment you have, the much more at attack will be successful. So Ukraine need those. You know, this is, makes huge difference. So it, it gives you basically like eight to twelve hours more time, and this is the, one of the most important advantage to being effective, seeing you know and uh, seeing really where is the target and take it down. So this will give huge huge difference for the special operation forces that we are basically want to help. And I know you've been in contact with units about the spring counteroffensive that is about to happen. Have you had any information? Do or are they lacking these capabilities? Definitely, the challenge is that basically that we are helping units which is getting like new, you know, armor from the west. But many times there's not enough other things, you know. So say, say, and we are talking about as you know, we're talking about. 60,000 soldiers potentially. Yes. Which yeah. is now. So you can just, it is just insane big amount, but no big country could ever, ever do, and especially not Ukraine. Say you need it. Say you totally need it. Sarah. New, new soldiers are basically, which is trained in different countries, and these small things are making all of, you know, one success, other success, but one day big success you know. and you guys have seen we have done this convoy before we joined Ragnar's convoy to Kiev you have seen how the process goes these cars were delivered straight to the units the same thing will happen with these night and thermal visions through your convoy they will be given straight to the units right exactly because we we, we, we need to we try to be as fast as we can so because uh, spring attack will take months and months so even if it builds there you know April May it will give difference and we, we will be sure so this will go directly without any delay to the units, which will actively in the front line, in the Donbass different fronts, basically taking those attacks and making gain to the Ukraine. Okay, thank you, Ragnar. Thank you. Um, basically, here is one thing. 24 Brigade actually was so thankful for the help of Arthur Rehi and community has done. So they asked to send basically a special medal by 24 Brigade, especially for Arthur. But not only that his car, but all of the things that he has done to talking and informing all the world about Ukraine war. And say, personally, Oscar, I should thank you to have a handshake <laughs> and you can have it, something very unique from Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Slava. So you can see two different technologies on this table, even though there are so many devices. The first is night vision device, and the second is a thermal device. So let's start from the night vision. The purpose of the night vision device is to amplify light. It's an analog device and it works for a really long time. So one battery lasts usually 24, 
25 to 40 hours because it's an analog device. So it amplifies slight thousands, ten thousands of times. Easy to use, lightweight, you can helmet mount it. There are also monocular editions, there are binocular editions. Thermal devices have a different technology. One is handheld, it's a bigger unit. It has 50 millimeter optics. Some of the devices have 35 millimeter optics. And the good thing about it, even though it's a bit bigger than other device, it sees really far away. So you can see close to two kilometers with it and you can detect vehicles two kilometers away. And since there are a lot of open fields, you have a really good visibility. The good thing about this device as well is that you can replace the batteries. Again, since it's a digital device, it takes a lot more battery than a night vision device, which is analog and works for a very long time. The second unit that there is a lot of value is a lot smaller brother of this bigger unit. It has smaller optics, as you can see, but it's a handheld unit and you can also mount it to your helmet. There, are, there is a special mount that's coming with it and you can mount it and you can just move around and continuously see thermal image. Giving the unit's ability to both see heat and see at night is giving them huge advantage to operate during night time. Any war is a war of logistics and this happens during the night where it's the time to resupply. Yeah. That you stop the daily advances, right? Yeah, exactly. If we if we're talking about the raids and ambushes uh, during the night, mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely the most uh, heaviest blow to the enemy. Mm -hmm. So if they can get uh, behind the enemy lines and uh, conduct these ambushes and raids, that is the game changing uh, game changing thing, actually. Yeah. Of course, uh, wars are won by conventional battles, be conventional battles, but. Uh, we get there by fighting the enemy logistics, fighting the enemy manpower, mm -hmm. cutting off their fuel, cutting off their food, everything like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so if I have a squad that has night vision, let's say everybody has a night vision device and we have a couple of thermal devices, mm -hmm. that gives us the option to fight during the night like it's day. So we can infill, we can walk, we can attack, we can fight in the cities, whatever. We get the, we get the capability that we can just like walk around, go on patrol, do whatever we want. If we have thermals, we get the capability to detect the enemy. So we, uh, usually we don't use the thermal devices to like walk around, let's say, yeah. but we use night vision for that. And then we always have guys in the squad where let's say we walk uh, 50, 100 meters, then the movement stops and then we observe with our thermals. If we see something, we react to it. We decide, are we going to go past it? Are we going to engage it, whatever? So is that both of these are needed. Like there's all this popular question, like should I, should I take night vision or should I take thermal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the, the answer in the end is that you need both. Because you need uh, thermal to detect the enemy and you need night vision to attack the enemy, basically. And uh, it's really simple as that. And we have the capability here to send to Ukrainian units a thermal sight mounted on a gun, night vision uh, mounted on the helmet and a thermal camera just on your hand, on the position that you can watch through on the field if you see Wagnerites approaching your open fire. Exactly, yeah. So uh, currently we are looking at uh, uh, night vision options that can be mounted on helmets or can either be handheld. They are most likely going to be fitted on helmets. Mm -hmm. That's the most popular uh, use case for them. Uh, so they put it on the helmets, it works. It's uh, really simple as that. It's mm -hmm. uh, not rocket science. Uh, about thermals, we are talking about uh, multifunctional thermals that can uh, either be uh, helmet mounted, handheld, optics mounted, and uh, that will uh, get the. Uh, like, there's one thing you see the enemy, the other thing is uh, putting precise shots on the enemy, yeah. and this will give you that capability. You know your po point of aim, you shoot, you take down the enemy. And uh, the other thing is that we're also looking at uh, long-range observation right now. If we are talking about Estonia, let's say, then uh, we don't have a lot of these open fields, so we don't need to reach that far with our thermals. But uh, currently for this project, we have uh, picked out uh, also thermals that can reach over two kilometers mm, wow. so that they can actually uh, observe over the fields. So you get this early warning 
uh, that uh, the enemies are co uh, the enemies are coming or where they are, and you can maneuver based on that basically. And you can prepare your defenses. Maybe you don't even have to fire a shot. You see the enemy two kilometers away. Uh, you call in the artillery and the job is basically done. Yeah, because obviously if you're on a post, you see the field, all of these locations are shot in by the artillery, you have the coordinates and you just call it, they hit it. Exactly, you have already uh, lines of pre-aimed fire. Yeah. You spot the enemy, you call it in and the people will do their job. And uh, you can see the capability to see an enemy fighter that is uh, two kilometers away can really make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, you will see the heat signature, but you also need like a standard magnified optics, like they just look through the binoculars, confirm that it's the enemy, so they're not dropping bombs on the wrong people. Ukrainians are already fighting for all of us. They're doing amazing, so let's give them the capability to fight at night. You guys have this option to donate. Link is in the description below. All of the funds collected will be used to send thermal and night vision capabilities to Ukrainian frontline units. Let's do it, my friends. Slava Ukraini.